There it is. All right. Good morning and welcome to Sunday School with New Bethel Ministries. I am Sister Mia Brown Rose, and this is my sister. Hey, everybody. I'm Sherry Brown. And we're the Brown Sisters, and we have the privilege of bringing you our lesson today. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Um, <laughs> and we are privileged to have this opportunity to share with you. We thank um, our Bishop, uh, Bishop A. Glenn Brady and the new Bethel Ministries, which is located at 745 Walker, Kansas City, Kansas, and as well uh, as our Christian education staff as well. And so we have a wonderful lesson for you today, and we're going to jump right in. Um, our lesson is going to be kind of co-taught between Sherry and I, so we're going to get started with prayer, and then we're going to go into our lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your yes, presence. Yes. We thank you for this opportunity to share your word. And Father, we pray that you would hide us behind the cross, Father God, that we would share what only you have for us to share. And we pray for those that are listening and watching that they will glean what you have for, for each of us. Yes. And Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We count it done in the strong and the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So here we go. Our lesson today is going to come out of is three background scriptures that we find. And it's uh, the first scripture is Luke 8, 1 through 3. Then Mark 15, verse 40. And John, the 20th chapter, verses 10 through 18. And the title of our lesson is Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple. And I have a question that I need to ask. Mia, I'm going to ask this question. I want people to get in the chat room, first of all, and start telling me the answers of what you believe. The first question I want to ask is, who knows what a disciple is? Who knows the definition of what a disciple is? Come on. And I'm looking for I'm looking for your answers. I'm looking for your answers. Come on, come on. This is a school lesson. We come need on, those answers. School scholars, tell us what a disciple is. Absolutely. And then my second question is: the title is Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple. And I want to ask the question, how many of us really ever thought about? Because me, when I was growing up, you know, we knew about the 12 disciples, right? And we thought about them as the men. How many of us thought that women were disciples or Mary Magdalene was a disciple for that matter? Hmm, that's a good question. Okay. And the reason why I asked that, let's talk about the character of Mary Magdalene. And when I was doing my research, Mary Magdalene, it was found that the reason why they called her Mary Magdalene is because she was from the region of Magdala. So it was like really Mary of Magdala. It was said those women that weren't married, they used or their last name was kind of connected to the region that they were from. And so she was actually Mary Magdala, Mary from Magdala or Mary Magdalene. And one of the things we found out in our study about Mary Magdalene, she um, was a woman that had been possessed with demons, not one demon. She had not two demons. She didn't have three. She had seven demons, y'all. That's a lot of demons. That's, that's, you know, they said the number of seven is complete. She complete, she was complete with uh, seven demons. Taking over. Absolutely. She was completely taken over. And a lot of times when you look at that and you think about the title and then you think, look at her past, let's look at her past. And you talk about her having seven demons. And the thing I often want to ask or wanted to know, what were those demons? They never talk about which demons they have. And a lot of people can often say, as we were discussing, Mia and I, we were talking about um, a lot of times people think about the exorcist and those demons. But let's look, let's let's take that out of the Bible and get real real with it about demons because 
Could it have been a drug demon that she had? Could it have been a mental demon that she had? Um, let's get real, let's get personal. Okay, I'm gonna raise my hand. Could it have been a cussing demon that she had? Could it have, mm, okay, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm trying to be real. Could it have been a sex demon that she had? Could it have been a drinking demon? Whatever the case may be, a lot of times we'll look at that and we won't really apply it to ourselves and say, do we have demons? Do we have something that actually Jesus needs to deliver us from? And that's what we really see about Mary Magdalene. Not only did she have the seven demons, but she encountered Jesus who delivered her from those demons. And we can see her whole life was changed. And Mia, I believe you're gonna talk about now her changed life from this point. We wanted to really understand her past because a lot of times people will look at the things that we've been through and say, uh, how, how can Jesus use that person? Or how can they be counted as a disciple when they had all of this mess in their past? And I'm sure some of us, some people look at us and know our past and say, mm, how was Jesus using her? Oh, how she a Sunday school teacher, Mia? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, oh, how are you a worship leader? How are you? I know your past. So I'm going to let uh, Sister Mia go from this point and talk about now, not only from her past, but now we want to look at where she is now. Amen. Uh, good job, Sherry. One of the things, even before we jump into where the Lord took her, I want to ask you a question, and this is rhetorical. You don't have to ask, answer this question out on the chat. But how many of us have been delivered from demons? Mm. What has the Lord delivered you from? Amen. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't Amen. seven, maybe it was one that overtook mm -hmm. your life. And so that's where we want to start from. And the lesson is Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple. Sherry yeah. asked the question earlier, what is a disciple? And I see that some of you got it right. And the answer is for those that don't know it. The definition of a disciple is a follower or a learner of Christ. That's good. That's what Mary Magdalene was. Guess what? That's what you are as well. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you've accepted him as your savior. You are also a disciple of Christ, a follower and a learner of Christ. But there is an operative word in, in the title and it says a faithful, faithful disciple. Amen. And that's yeah. one of the things that we want to talk about. <clears throat> I found it interesting as I was studying this lesson. Right now in the world, we um, our world in the United States is very divisive right now. There is a lot of racism and it's, uh, it's us against them. It's all those kinds of things. And a lot of times in corporate America, what we're talking about and what we're trying to teach and push is diversity. Mm -hmm. And we're following this lesson, how Jesus was so diverse. Yes. When you look at the culture, the culture was about men first. Women mm -hmm. were considered as property or second class, not even considered citizens. However, you see in this text, when we look at Luke eight through one through three, yeah. it paints a picture as Jesus and the 12 are traveling through uh, Galilee and he is ministering, but not only are the 12 with him traveling with them, but there's also a group of women. One of those women being Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene who had the seven demons who people thought she was crazy. People thought that she never was gonna get better. People thought that, you know, why is he wasting her time? Now she's part of the group. She's hanging out with Jesus, amen. So I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. Okay. That was a that how you were saying people pushed her to the side. I want to know how many of us, when we see somebody or we think they got a problem or we don't count them as something that we cast them away. 
Amen. We throw Amen. them to the side. How many of us just look at that situation right there instead of looking at them and saying, praying for them or saying, hey, can they be helped or can they can can they be delivered? We'll just discount them and say they don't have we don't have any use for them. Amen. That's that's really, really good. And what we find is is while they weren't considered a disciple or part of the 12, the part they did play was important. I read one commentary was that the women may have traveled to make meals or run errands or any of those kinds of things. But as we go through this lesson, we're going to see what an integral part Mary Magdalene would play in history and a part she played, a, a big part she played in the gospel. Amen. Amen. So again, you might think that because of my past, that mm. I can't really be used but the story mm. shows where somebody who people had written off, people thought that yeah. she she was too messed up. There were too many things that had gone on in her life. Jesus still could use her. Jesus still thought she was important. Come on. Jesus still loved her. Yeah. Amen. All right. So Amen. let's look at point two. Point two, we're looking at Mark, the 15th chapter in the 40th verse, this particular scene, it's saying refusing to leave the scene. What scene are we talking about? This account, Mark mm. this account, or a scene of the cross. It appears that the 12 have left the scene, but the women mm -mm. are looking mm -mm. from a distance. Say that again. It was the most humiliating form of execution. And if you read, the Romans didn't even use crucifixion to discipline or correct their own people. They used it for everybody else. It was sort of a sign. If you mess with us, this is what you're going to get. So mm -hmm. even hanging people that even attached themselves to someone that was being crucified, you were taking a risk. There it is. Amen. Mm -hmm. But remember, yeah. we're going to go back to that, that, that word, faithful. She was a faithful disciple. When all of the men had gone, they were afraid. Because remember, just hanging out could cause you some problems. So they kind of scattering. But the scripture says that the women, Mary Magdalene in particular, was standing a ways off, but she stayed there. When everybody else had gone, she was faithful. My question is, are you willing to stand when things look bleak? Are you willing to stand for Christ when everything else looks like it's not, it's not going our way? It's not looking good. Are you willing? Ask yourself that. Are you willing to stand for Christ? When everybody else has kind of turned their back, when everybody else has gone away, are you willing to stand? In this case, Mary Magdalene stood. Why did she stand? She knew what Christ had done for her. She knew when he, everybody mm. else had wrote her off. He said, Mary, I love you. She had watched, she had been walking with him. She had seen him do miracles. She had watched him heal the sick. She had watched him give sight to the blind. She had watched him <clears throat> make the lame uh, walk. She seen that, amen? More, so, than, more than she seen it, she experienced it. Amen, amen, amen. And there's times that we experience it ourselves. Mm -hmm. But the question was, when things look bleak, Remember, the disciples had seen it too. But they left. But the scripture said they watched the force. She watched the force and she stayed. Amen. So that's Amen. our question on that. Question or point number three. Looking for the signs of the resurrection. Now remember, <clears throat> this is Mary Magdalene who had seven demons who people had kind of written off, who was a woman. But she, remember I said she played an integral part of sharing the gospel. When we look at 
um, St. John, the 20th chapter, verses 10 through 18. Here, John records the account uh, of many a first of the tomb. They believe that the body had been stolen. Remember? <laughs> they had been saying, we're going to put a guard out because they're going to try to come and steal the body. Right? Mary had gone to the tomb because they were going to dress the body. But when they got to the tomb, what happened? Sure, what happened? There was no body. It there was, was gone. no body. It was gone. There was no body. The scripture said that Mary was sad. She was weeping. Yeah. And at that point, an angel appeared to her and said, why are you weeping? And mm. she said, because my Lord, he's not here. And at that point, she heard a voice. So she, somebody touched her and said, why are you weeping? She didn't even recognize who he was. It was the yeah. Christ. And he told her, don't weep. <laughs> it's me. Don't touch. He told her, don't touch me either. Because I have not yet ascended. But he told her, go and tell it. Go and share. Go and share. Go. And she yeah. did exactly what he did, what he told her. That's a part. That is an integral part of the gospel. He tells yeah. us to go ye therefore and share the gospel. That's exactly what she did. Again, this is a person who to many people didn't mean much. She goes from being afflicted with demons to being a follower, to being a faithful follower, to a person that goes down in history, the one of the people that shared the gospel. She is now considered, according to the scripture, she is a disciple and she is a disciple because she was a follower and she was a learner of Christ. Amen? Amen. So my question here is, are you a disciple? Are you a faithful follower of Christ? Come on. In that chat. We want to see it. We want to see it. We want to see it. We want to see. see. Are you faithful? Are you faithful in that? Sister Mia, you brought up a good point. And I like the part that you were talking about. She became a faithful disciple. And how, how some of the studies I was looking at about how women were treated, they said only probably about 5%, 5 to 8% of the women in the Bible are actually named. And when you go back and we looked at her past and we talked about she had demons, she had all this mess, as we could say, in her life. And then... But when we get to the point where she's at the, the tomb, the resurrection, not only was it important, but it says Jesus, she was the first person that saw Jesus, number one. And I look at that, that we could say her past was so messed up, but Jesus loved her so much. She was so important to him that he revealed himself to her first, Amen. to a woman first, a woman, a woman with a past first and so I think a lot of times we have to internalize that and Mia we're not discounting you but women a lot of times we think we are less or we can make be made to feel less mm -hmm. and that we will put ourselves on the back burner but God says you are important to him yeah. and that he will reveal himself to us even in our past or whatever has happened in our life he knows us from the bit he knows the number of hairs that we have on our head yeah. So the thing that I want us to see, we are in the season right now of number one, it says we are in the season of restoration, restoring. And we can look at Mary's life and we see that God restored her. She had demons and he delivered her from those demons. That's talking about that restoration. We're being restored. Mm -hmm. And how many of us God has delivered us? He's restored us back to the household of faith. And then the next point, it says, we are being renewed. It says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what it showed was Mary was being renewed as she followed Christ, as that she became that disciple. She was a follower. She was a learner. So then she was being renewed daily, 
renewed all the time. And it says we need to renew ourselves. God's mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And then that helps us to become faithful because he's been faithful to us. And then the last point is rebuilding. And when you think about being rebuilt, she was helped building the kingdom of Christ because she did the great commandment, what she went and she shared the gospel. So we look at those three points that God has given our uh, our church is to be restored, renewed, and be rebuilt. And so Mary, we see those three things happening in her life. Gotta ask the question, are those three things happening in your life? Mm -hmm. And as they are happening in your life, are you helping someone else in your life to be renewed, restored, and rebuilt? And that's what God is asking us to do. If you have been restored and God has renewed you, now you be, need to be on the part of rebuilding. How do we rebuild the, the body of Christ? How do we go out and spread the gospel so others can be restored and be brought, brought back to the household of faith so that's the thing that i want us to take away from this lesson that it doesn't matter what your past is it doesn't matter if you are male or female it doesn't matter whatever your social standing is and you brought up a good word diversity god was very diverse jesus was yeah. very diverse and he didn't care what your status was your but he wants us to know that he loves us regardless he created us and he created us for a purpose that's what I wanted people to catch out of that. Amen. Amen. That is perfect. Um, there is, my sister and I were talking about how um, Christ is so intentional and how diverse mm. it was. And we were laughing about there used to be a song, a late uh, soul singer. And you know, <laughs> is, is, um, better known as the Godfather of Soul. And he used to sing a song. Uh, it's a man's world. Yeah, but it would be nothing without a woman or a girl. Come on, so ladies. Now. God can use you. Men, God can use you. Children, God can use you. He loves you. And so we're asking today, and for you to keep in your mind, allow God to restore you, allow him to renew you, and then allow him to rebuild you so you can share the gospel. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to share with you. We wanna see your chats, we wanna see your comments. Um, and we're asking you to continue to pray for us. And for next week, we'll be back um, at nine o'clock. It won't be us, it'll be another team, but keep praying for us and remember to be restored, be renewed and be rebuilt. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God Love bless you guys.